So Nikon has been really killing it lately, coming up with a lot of new cool gear for their Z series of cameras. They've come up with some really nice prime lenses over the last couple of years that are really, really high level portrait lenses like the 85 millimeter 1.2 and the 50 millimeter 1.2 that has come out. But now the new lens that has all the photographers chomping at the bit to get a chance to use it is the new Z series 135 millimeter F1.8 Plena lens. This is a beautiful lens that's really been pushing as a nice little portrait lens and things like that. And it's something that I've been really, really wanting to try since it was announced uh, this last couple months ago. And finally, you know, one of the local shops here in Tokyo got the lens in and I was able to rent it for a couple days. And man, uh, just to, you know, a little bit of spoiler warning, this is an amazing lens. This thing is crazy. So yeah, let's just jump into it and check it out. So first off, as always, let's take a look at the physical characteristics of this lens. So to start off with, the lens itself weighs 995 grams, which means it's not a light lens at all in any means, but it's not overly heavy as well. So it's having a bit of extra weight to these kind of higher end premium portrait lenses, especially when they shoot 1.8 and things like that, kind of a necessity and it's just a nature of the beast, but I didn't find it overly heavy or uncomfortable to use at all. It was very, very simple and easy to use. And like a lot of the Z series lenses, this lens also has two programmable function buttons on the lens and a movable aperture ring. And we'll get into my thoughts on that a little bit later in the video. But yeah, this has these extra functions that are included in the lens. Internally, this lens has 11 rounded blades, which when come together, create the hole that the light passes through. Having 11 blades creates a very, very nice, smooth, rounded bokeh in your images. And yeah, as you could probably see in the images that I'm gonna show you soon, it's quite amazing. And these bokeh balls and these bright orbs of light or whatever you wanna call them, they're quite, quite nice. So yeah. <laughs> These blades allow for a very, very nice smooth rounded bokeh and it's very nice in the images. Also internally, there are motors inside of this lens that allow for quick and silent autofocus when shooting both stills and video. This is really important and it's kind of a really good selling point for the lens. And I think I'm just going to quote Nikon USA's website here and give you the exact details of this part because it's impossible for you to remember all this. So just one second. Yeah, so to quote Nikon USA on their website, Nikon's multi-focus system uses dual STM stepping motors moving in sync for enhanced precision, especially when shooting wide open, say at 1.8. The ultra fast system also operates in near silence so you can track moving subjects without mechanical noises or vibrations. So yeah, this is great. Really, really helps, uh, especially when shooting video with this lens on any Z series of cameras. Also, due to the construction of the rear element of the lens, it seems that this lens also allows for very, very, if not non-existent, vignetting around the images when shooting wide open. I know I've used a lot of different prime lenses in the past, and I shoot wide open almost all the time. And yes, a lot of those prime lenses did create a bit of a natural vignette in the image. Not something I hate, it's actually something I kind of enjoy sometimes, but not having it at the start and having a nice clean image all the way to the corners and that, is actually a bonus because a lot of people don't want vignetting and you can always add it in in Photoshop afterwards. So this function or this ability of this lens to shoot with zero vignetting and equal exposure all across the frame, it's actually really nice for a lot of people and I think it's a really cool function of this lens. So, and just last a little kind of tiny speck of the lens, it does have an 82 millimeter lens cap or filter size. So if you do want to shoot wide open video specifically, with this lens at 1.8, in the bright daylight, you're probably gonna to wanna to pick up some ND filters. So if you're in the market for ND filters for this lens, you're gonna need filters with an 82 millimeter size. Yeah, so if that helps. So that's all the basic specs of the lens. Very, very interesting. A lot of cool things to see there. A lot of innovation coming from Nikon these days with these nice high-end portrait lenses. But what is it really like to actually get out in the street and use this lens for a portrait session, say, out in Tokyo, like I did. <laughs> so yeah, I actually went out uh, at night with, did a little night session, a night portrait session with a model just in front of Tokyo Station. It's a very, very popular area. I had a really good time with the lens, but uh, just before I go into the details about how I felt shooting with the lens, here's a quick video showing some of the video and the photos we got during our session. So please check that out. And then I'll jump back into the video here and talk about my personal experience of actually using the lens and getting out in the street and trying to shoot with it.
So yeah, I had a really good time with my model out in the street. We had a lot of fun, just a couple different spots around Tokyo Station. A really cool spot to shoot at night and in the day even as well. But yeah, this lens is, wow, <laughs> this thing is pretty amazing. I had such a great time shooting with it. The images are all very, very sharp and very clean and clear across the whole frame as well, which is great. No vignetting that I saw really when I was shooting. And yeah, this lens was crazy to use for sure. What I obviously found most amazing with this lens is when you shoot wide open, any kind of light in the background is just gonna turn into a big, bright, colorful orb of light. Where we were shooting in many different spots, the lights were actually quite far back from us. There was nothing where the lights were right behind us or anything like that. So with the 135 millimeter focal length, it actually compresses and brings up the background a lot more than say if you were shooting at a 50 or an 85. So these lights that are, you know, we're like 50 meters away or more, these lights in this image here, these are the lights lights of the cars waiting to cross the intersection or the stop lights and things like that lights on the building and it's just obliterated into a big beautiful mosaic of light orbs and things like that different colors and stuff like that which was really really impressive to see even in this shot here we have the city way in the background and it's quite far away actually it's a couple kilometers away for sure but with the 135 again compression bringing up that background right into the back of the model and just obliterating all the buildings is into a whole bunch of white and red orbs and stuff like that and saying that even shooting at 1.8 at this focal length you're not super killing all the detail in the model's face and her cheeks and her hair and everything like that. When I had her sit down here, you can still see there's lots of detail in her face. It's not bokeh out of existence. The wall is still looking pretty nice, uh, but the lights in the background that are down the street, they're all just big bright orbs of light and it looks really, really nice. Again, it really separates the model from the background and it's a fun thing to be able to do, especially at night when you're out shooting in the street like this, play with these lights that are around because when you look at them, it's like, okay, these are just lights. It doesn't really look that interesting. But when you get them as the background with this lens, it just like crazy bokeh, crazy light orbs everywhere. And it's something you can really play with and be quite, quite creative with, I think, when you're out shooting in the street. And also, like I said before, shooting at 1.8 with zero vignetting is actually really nice as a professional photographer. A lot of the lenses I use, my prime lenses, they do add a... They do create naturally a little bit of vignetting. And I have been told by clients that they would ha like to have the images without vignetting. So I had to like edit the images a little bit extra to kick up the vignetting. But if you don't have any vignetting to start with, it's really, really great. Easy as a professional photographer to just pop that back in in Photoshop if you want. But I know a lot of clients and I've been told in other like Red Bull events and things like that, don't add vignetting and don't have vignetting in your photos. So having a lens that just starts off with zero vignetting is actually really, really nice and allows for a nice even exposure all across the image. And now just to talk about how I felt about the focus and keeping the focus on the model's face the entire time. This lens did a very, very good job of keeping the focus straight on my model's eye. Of course, this is also in part thanks to the Z9's autofocusing algorithm and its ability to track eyes and faces of your subjects automatically while you're shooting both photos and videos. But the lens itself was also very, very quick in its focus, very quick to acquire focus, and it was able to stay on focus virtually every time I was shooting. I only had one time where I was trying to shoot somewhere very, very dark. I wasn't able to add in any extra light that really did anything different. So it was basically a black scene and the camera was able to find my model's face. It was just having a little bit of trouble with her hair and her face and it's such a dark scene. But in the end, we were able to uh, take some video and we were able to get some photos. So in the end it worked. But overall, the focus of the lens was very, very quick, very silent as well. We were shooting video and uh, photos in a fairly noisy environment. <laughs> So the autofocusing sound really doesn't make much of a difference. But I know, say if you're shooting in a studio or you're shooting out in nature and it's very quiet and you wanna pick up all those natural sounds and stuff like that, I think having this very, very quiet and quick autofocus when shooting both videos and stills as well, but especially for videos, is uh, really a bonus. And you don't have to have any of that weird autofocusing noises that I know things like my F-mount 70 to 200 does produce. So having this as an ability of your lens, you just don't have to worry about it and sound is clean. Whenever you're shooting video, it's great. I think it's a really good option and I had no issues with it when we were out shooting. Now, saying that, nothing is perfect and there are some caveats when using this lens, especially out in the street like I was doing. To be completely honest, this was my first time shooting with a 135 millimeter prime, especially the first time shooting portraits with a 135 millimeter prime. and because of the 135 focal length, you're really quite zoomed in on there. You know, if you're taking like really cropped up, really close pictures of a model's face in that, you're kind of close. But as soon as you get back and try to add any environment to it and shoot like a half body, three quarter body or anything like that, 
you're actually having to move quite far back away from your model. And one thing I noticed because of the area and the environment we were shooting in, it's outside, it's public, it's noisy road and everything like that. I was quite a bit further away from my model than I would be usually comfortable with when I'm trying to communicate with them, especially with somebody I've just met five minutes before. And I really kind of want to create that uh, rapport with my model and communicate with them and talk with them. But instantly, as soon as I'm shooting, I put myself a bit of a further distance than I'm com comfortable with. And it really kind of created this, this barrier and it made it communicating with my model actually a little bit more difficult than I would have liked. Being in Japan, you know, out in the street, it's kind of rare for people to be yelling at each other or talking very, very loudly to each other, which I would have had to have done in this situation. So just be aware that when shooting uh, portraits with this lens, you are going to be further back than you expect probably. And unless you're in a very, very quiet environment, it will add a challenge of communicating vocally with your model. Another aspect of this lens that I found a little bit annoying every once in a while is the aperture ring that is on it. It is very smooth, very nice to use if you like using them. But myself, I think if I was to buy this lens, I would just shut that off completely at all times. I found that just walking around, using the lens, using the camera. There's times where I accidentally rotated the ring just a little bit, changing my aperture from 1.8 to say like 2.8 or something like that. So all of a sudden my images are a little bit darker than I thought they would be. And I have to double check and oh, I'm actually shooting on a different aperture than I thought. So myself, I would probably just sh shut this off as soon as I get the lens uh, out of the box and you know, on the camera, I would disable that completely just because I like to have my images stay consistent because I shoot a lot of manual. And I think out in the street and things like that, when you're shooting in these darker environments, environments and more challenging environments manual is critical to be able to use so I yeah, personally I've just said it like five times but <laughs> I would just shut this aperture ring off completely when using this lens now again these are very very small issues to have with such an amazing lens like I said the image quality is just beautiful the bokeh this lens creates at night with the lights in the background and everything is just absolutely ethereal. it's such a wonderful lens if you want to get a bit more of a fantasy look in your shots and things like that I think this lens would be great there are some things you need to be aware of when shooting at the 135 with the prime just the extra space that it creates, trying to communicate with your model and things like that. But I think overall, this lens is absolutely super amazing. And it's something that I'm definitely gonna be throwing on my Christmas list for this year. So if Santa, if you're, if you're watching, <laughs> uh, please throw that in my stocking and I don't need anything else for sure. But honestly, you know, I just had my second child born a month ago. So uh, yeah, things might be a little bit tight for me <laughs> over the next couple months. I can hide receipts and stuff like that from my, no, I shouldn't even start doing that. But Anyways, great, great lens overall. I'm really happy with the images and the video I got with using it. And I think if it is something you can afford and you're a professional photographer and you pick this up, uh, I think you're gonna love it. And yeah, just I hope you can enjoy using this lens and you can afford using this lens because it. I think it's about 2,500 Americans, so it's definitely not cheap at all, but it is a good investment because this is something you'll be using for years to come down the road, especially if you're an aspiring or full out professional photographer. So I hope that helps. That's just my quick review and my feelings about the lens. I had tons of fun using it. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up down below. I love hearing from you guys. And yeah, subscribe and check me out. I've got some more videos coming up soon. So thanks. Talk to you guys soon.